first big notable feature for witches is that they get an extra five points for towns. So this doesn't super consequential for how you play the game, but it's a nice boost. And it does push you when you're playing witches to put a little more priority in being able to build out more and do a lot of digging to um, secure ideally three town locations. So what really gives witches a unique flavor is their stronghold. It's actually, it's a very good stronghold. You don't have to build it, but it's a really nice stronghold for the beginning of the game and the mid game. And what it is, is it gives you this action space where once per round, including the round you build the stronghold in, you can do a witch's flight to any green on the map. So even if you can't reach it at the moment with your shipping, you can, you know, witches fly on your witch's broom to any of those greens. And so that's, you know, if you think about it, that you're getting a free, you're getting a free um, dwelling down. So that's saving you, you know, a, a worker and two coins, <clears throat> you know, but also it helps you kind of get around the map without needing to increase your shipping. So you can also think about the stronghold as sort of saving you um, resources um, for a, a, a while, right? You might need to increase ship later to um, connect for network, but at least you can delay that and use your coins and priests for other purposes for most of the game because you can get around the map using your witch's flight. And then the last thing I'll note is that the um, they start with two steps on air. And so they'll often try to, they, you know, they really like early air rewards and will often try to prioritize air cult a bit. The most common witches' starting spots are F4 and E9. E9 is nice um, because it gives us access to a nice town spot. And often if black or brown are in the game, we're going to get neighbors um, and lots of power exchange um, through that area. The other thing that E9 does is, and um, we'll come back to this in the openings, is that with one shipping, like imagine taking the temporary shipping starting scroll, C5 is a really interesting hex for us because if we can dig it, we have access to A10, C4, C3. Um, and from our other starting spot, F4, we already have a green accessible on one ship. So that's the other nice thing about these starting placements. So often, I'd say these are the most common starting placements. Against mermaids, the starting placements are F4 and C4. C4 is important because mermaids will be on D5. And if we don't protect C4, mermaids will dig it. They start with a ship, they'll dig it round one and steal that northern territory from us. So we want to be on C4 uh, against, um, against mermaids. Another possibility is, let's say mermaids are not in, but chaos magicians are in. We could start F4, C3. And trust that you know we can get east later we're gonna get you know if all the upgrading is gonna happen in the middle of the board and then we just focus on from c3 heading east from there um f4 is nice because you know brown yellow they'll come around us and give us a lot of power and even if if we can't get d5 the blue we can take c7 or excuse me e7 and get g3 and do a sanctuary town there or maybe we get h4 also but often this will be our sanctuary town spot um so these are the things that we are looking for almost always on f4 um and if we can get through here that's uh, amazing um so it's almost always f4 e9 against mermaids it's f4 c4 and then every once in a while will be f4 c3 Part of what makes witches so fun is that they are so flexible and they have a lot of different good round one uh, ways to go round one and two. So um, I want to let, let's say I think priority one for you as a newer player is to get good at opening temple with a couple one or two new dwellings down. So really happy to, you know, be on dig scroll as like most factions are. Um, you can always get, of course, like temple and one new dwelling that way. Um, one thing that you notice is that witches, uh, they actually, they're more likely than almost any other faction to start on temp ship um, starting scroll round one for a couple reasons. Um, one is, is that if you're in double center starting placements, you probably notice that there's a green across the water from you at both of those spots. So if you start on temp ship, 
it out of double center. You can open temple two new dwellings without using any power actions, so that's really strong. Um, and when you open, you know, or, you know, of course, they can always uh, single dig and bridge, like, so you could bridge to one of those if you wanted to with a, with a single dig, or actually more likely would be with, like, dig scroll, you could have the option of taking a bridge action to getting a, a second dwelling down round one. But of course, in Terra Mystica in general, you'd prefer to not be doing bridges. Um, but, and when you take a favor with this, so I think that, you know, let's, again, let's think about this as our default. Um... When you take a favor with which is round one, I would encourage you to make your default favor air two. It's going to be a fun game. It synergizes with their two um, air steps. So the, like the two steps you get here will help you win air cult. Um, and power income is good because it's going to help you take a lot of double dig power actions later that you need to finish out your towns. Um, now, it's totally also legitimate to take Earth One round one with them if you want. Um, you know, if you feel like you're getting a big enough um, game. So, for example, if you're on like Temp Ship and opening Temple Two New Dwellings and you're taking a Coins Power action, you might just think to yourself, eh, "Let me play it safe here and take Earth One round one, and I think I can get enough going, um, and I'll just score all game with that." You know, you can also take Air Two round one and plan to grab Earth One round two. I think top players are probably a little bit more likely to go that route. Um, but either of those are fine. And of course, there'll be games where, you know, Fire 1 with that temple's fine. There'll be games where Earth 2 with that temple's fine. Like, all those will work out um, fine. And of course, as with almost any faction, you want to keep your eye on the call rewards and sort of adapt your plan around that. Um, so the other thing that you, like, I'd say focus on that one, the Temple of New Dwellings opening for Witches at first. The other one that you want to really keep your eye open for that we've mentioned is the Dwelling Rush. And so again, that's usually involves starting on this Temp Ship scroll and then single, single digging that gray and then being able to, out of the standard placements, and then being able to fling five new dwellings out onto the board. Um, so you're finishing with seven dwellings, you know, that's just a, like you're producing eight workers. It's super strong. Um, and let's say you're, uh, it's dwelling scoring round. So now you've got like scored on five, you know, you scored 10 points building those five dwellings in the round. Um, maybe you're passing on to the dwelling scroll that nobody took for round one or things like that. So that's just like a really definitely go like it's hard it's a harder game than opening temple new dwellings but i would say like in your first few witches games if you get a chance to try it i would try a dwelling rush game because it feels very different than a temple opening and it and it's it but it's very very strong you just have so many resources um then and of course what you're looking for after that is, is coins um so the other one that I want to draw your attention to here is opening Stronghold. Stronghold is great, right? So you start with six workers in hand, two for the trading post, four for Stronghold, and then you can Witch's Flight to get another dwelling down. So without using any scrolls or any power actions, you could finish round one, right, with a Stronghold and two dwellings. Now, of course, you'd like to be able to do more than that, um, but that's still actually like a pretty good economic start. So any sort of witch's stronghold opening is going to like be a pretty strong economic start. And so what you then need to figure out is how am I going to score, right? And so, you know, this is a game plan where you might take, you know, earth, like temple for earth one round two, for example, is very common after a, a vanilla sort of stronghold dwelling out opening. Another reason to do this opening, besides it, it being fun, is um, that maybe like there are a couple different, like maybe there's like, it lets you get to another place of the board very quickly. So, you know, you deciding your starting placements, there's three different places you wanted to place. You could only place in two. You could stronghold and get to that third place, basically round one, right? Like, and so that's sort of a, a way to, to grab territory and get around the board pretty quickly. And again, the, the reason this, this opening's hard for, um, for newer players, it's hard to convert that into scoring. And the other reason why it's it, on base map in particular, because this one ship route is so nice that 
like you can kind of spread around the board without using the stronghold. But if temporary shipping is not in the game, for example, and ship scoring is not in the game, now all of a sudden the stronghold is more appealing. So I'm being a little long-winded on that. Definitely play around with stronghold openings too, because they're a really good time. Um, but I would make temple new dwellings the, the default. The last one I'll mention that's um, probably shouldn't recommend to beginners, but playing with this, I'm a big fan of, of stronghold temple openings. I think they're really underplayed right now. And so uh, another sort of common, very, not common, but you'll see um, top players do this sometimes is open. You start on the big building scroll, you open stronghold, you take the workers power action, coins power action, you go temple. And usually that's an earth one then, because one of the things we said issues with stronghold openings is we're a little worried about points. So you temple for earth one and then you witches flight somewhere. So you still have pretty good production. Now you have priest production, you have a scoring tool, you have your stronghold up, you're spreading around the map. Like this is a really, this is a fun, that's a fun opening too. Um, yeah, so I think that's how I would think about witches openings for beginners. So ideally as witches, um, let's assume we can't get our dream town of F4 to C3. If we can get that, that's really, really good. But we said we're starting on F4 and E9. Let's assume that we can't go up through the middle to get C3. If we can, we definitely should do that. What does development now look like? We probably want to try to get this sanctuary town here or without sanctuary if we can also get H4. Another um, concern for us, so the other two most common town spots are the one in the east and this one in the north. And so this B5 hex becomes really critical. Can we get to C4 and can we double dig it to set up this town? Because once we get these two, usually we can get A11 as well. The other issue that we're concerned about in the mid game is if halflings or darklings or even alchemists are in the east with us, this hex right here, G6, often gets threatened. So if we're lollygagging and digging elsewhere, E7 and then the north, and we wait too long, halflings might start here and then increase digs round three, feel frisky, and just hit G6 and kill our east town possibility. We might still be able to do an east town F6 up through C5, but um, that's a bit of a concern. So one of the things we're doing in the mid game is looking, and again, they get an extra five points for towning as witches. So getting those three towns are, is really, really um, big. Um, the other possibility is thinking about, okay, do we use our stronghold to get someplace funky for a third town? For example, we could stronghold down to I-11 and then do a town in the Southeast. We could stronghold out west to either D1 or F2. This is not, not very common, but can we do some sort of um, weird town out there? That's one of the mid-game uh, considerations. And in general, um, witches like scoring favors, but because they get the extra points from towning, they're actually okay skipping, you know, they probably, you know, fairly frequently top players will skip happily skip either earth one or water one and err on the side of making sure that we're getting um, more digs to to try to win network and make sure we get three towns locked up witches are a medium strength faction very flexible i would say slightly above the average um just because their flexibility lets them you know, find a productive avenue in almost any situation. So I think they're medium, um, high end of medium. There are a few swing factors to look at for, um, for witches. So let's assume we're F4, E9, which are the most common starting placements. The first big one you want to check for is will you be able to um, dig up through the middle and get that town? If you, if you can get that, it's just really, really good to be able to do that and then not have to use bridges and whatnot. Two digs for three hexes. And then with one ship, you can connect your structures, which is really amazing to save, you know, not have to spend all those coins for ship increases. Um, 
The next thing, uh, another swing factor is, are you going to be, is it dwelling scoring round one? And will you be able to get like the temp shipping scroll and dwelling rush via C5, for example? Dwelling rushing in a dwelling scoring round is a really, really strong opening. So that's another thing to check for. The next thing to think about is, is gray in the game? Because if they are, F6 is going to be probably blocked, which makes us unable to do that East Town. And towning's uh, so important for us. We're also losing this hex, which we want as part of our sanctuary town. And not just that, they're threatening G3. So if we're on F4 and they're threatening G3, because doors might tunnel to it, engineers might start on temporary shipping, that's a that's a big problem for us. We probably lose our sanctuary um, town spot. But if we can beat Gray to that hex, maybe it's not so bad, right? Um, the next thing that we want to check with respect to swing factors are, do we see three town locations for ourselves? Um, so uh, let's assume that we can get that um, SA town in the sanctuary town in the middle, um, and we see the opportunity to go in the east potentially. A big question is, this town spot in the north are we going to be able to get that and in particular b5 is going to be threatened in a few different ways giants will start d7 and can stomp on b5 to get to a9 and they'll pretty happily do that early in the game um, another one that we need to be worried about is alchemists sometimes they'll start on b5 or they'll ship to b5 super quickly um, because they get their shipping up really fast so alchemists sometimes will beat us to b5 and kill um, that north town possibility. Another one is if you see nomads with the possibility of starting on B4, and if you see that it's you know big building scoring round one and or they're going to start on the big building scroll, they might actually sandstorm that B5 hex round one. A9 is a single dig for them. It sets up a nice town location and they'll have us as a neighbor on the C4 green. So those are the ones that would not take out that would like you know murder that that northern town so we want to be a little careful about you know um you have to be careful about which is if we can't do that in some of those types of situations those are games where we might open stronghold stronghold is like if you're in a difficult setup stronghold all is like often the answer so if you know maybe that means we're you know strongholding down to i11 or out west to claim a bit more territory um, and find our third town location that way. Otherwise, with respect to scrolls, witches are just really, really flexible. You know, they don't have to build their stronghold, but they're very happy to. They can score with shipping, but they're also very happy to have, you know, temp shipping and not increased shipping at all. So they're a really flexible faction on which scrolls they're looking for in the game. So witches are pretty spicy already but um some ideas to mix it up a little bit is to design your game plan around skipping both earth one and water one take neither of the primary scoring favors um for example do a dwelling rush straight into building a bunch of trading posts and then temple for air one <clears throat> that's a cool game plan um another hard one to do but you should put it on your bucket list is, is doing a four town witches game. So then you're getting 20 extra points. That's gonna be with a fire two favor. And uh, yeah, go for four town witches. Um, of course you can do things, like increasing digs is fun with any faction. So you could open earth two to crank your worker production and then um, increase your digs later to finish towns. And then a personal favorite of mine is opening stronghold temple and with that temple taking air two and then you still get your witch's flight, and that's just like bonkers uh, econ production. So that's a fun one too. So have at it. Yeah.